This video introduces parametric structural design and my name is Kirk Martini. The primary goal of this course is using computational tools and des design, specifically parametric geometry and structural analysis. So the course centers around the Karumba analysis uh, package that runs within the Rhino Grasshopper environment. Uh, we use automated tools uh, eventually in the course of member sizing and optimization methods. We employ the Galapagos component in analyzing structures. And the subject of the course is pedestrian bridges um, for a number of reasons. One is pedestrian bridges have a very direct connection between the structural scheme and the visual architectural qualities of the bridge. And also they're simply easier to model uh, than buildings. And there's a lot of sort of tedium involved in, in all the different load cases in a building and pedestrian bridges allow us to get at these issues much more directly. Uh, the methods, this is a project-based course. There are no exams in this. There are homework and lab problems, but they're all oriented towards being prepped to completing projects. Uh, and there's a significant amount of precedent study in this class of learning from uh, pedestrian bridges others have done. And these are some examples of projects that we look at. And there's quite a variety of structural types uh, and analysis types uh, in pedestrian bridges. And it's kind of a rich field. The project, main project for the course will center on a site in Charlottesville. This is the site of the uh, bridge at the uh, Charlottesville Skateboard Park. This was built a couple of years ago in Charlottesville. It uh, connects a parking lot to a uh, skateboard park. It's a substantial bridge has about 130 foot span, about 140 meters. And we look at ways to approach this. The bridge that's there now is quite a utilitarian bridge. And it's an interesting proposition to think about what would be a bridge that would be more architecturally fitting to that site and to that purpose of connecting to the skateboard park. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting forms that the skateboard park uh, suggests. And this is a final project from uh, an earlier year on this course, uh, you know, there's a design begins with a, an idea, an intent, as students develop a structural model um, to look at the various aspects of strength, stiffness, and stability of the bridge, uh, apply optimization tools to develop and refine that design further, and then also develop an architectural model that, in addition to dealing with structure or fitting with that structure, um, looks at the materials, the railings, the abutments, all of those architectural visual features, and it all needs to fit together. And that's the primary purpose of the course, is to bring these technical concerns together with the architectural visual concerns. There's also broader issues uh, in this course, so it's not just about how to make a bridge, uh, but there's this idea of inquiry, of whenever you're designing anything, of what's the question at hand when you're doing structural design, that drives this issue of abstraction. And it's fairly common in the early stages of design. You may use a fairly crude kind of structural representation in your analysis model if you're trying to answer sort of basic configures of configuration. As the design develops and becomes more refined, you then may develop another model which uses more sophisticated analysis methods, use more detail to answer those more detailed questions. So there's not just simply you make one model and the design is done, but it's an iterative process and you're always looking at this idea of what's the question at hand? What's the simplest abstraction I can use to answer that question? And there's also an idea of skepticism um, that we're doing these analysis, the computer's giving us results, and we shouldn't just believe things that come out of the computer. We need to have some skepticism and find reasons to believe them of, of hand calculations of other means to do that, ways to check results. Uh, this is how errors are found but we should never just simply believe things the computer tell us. We should always question them skeptically. So if that uh, sounds interesting to you, I hope to see you in the course.